Hello and welcome to worship as we gather together here for the second Sunday after Epiphany. We're already halfway through January and while it's very wintry outside, uh, we're warm in here because of the love of Jesus. Um, we're going to begin our service this morning with hymn number 644, The Church's One Foundation, number 644. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Brothers and sisters, if this is your penitent confession, then hear the good news that God has reserved for you. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 67, titled, Make Your Face Shine Upon Us. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. To God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Epiphany is from Amos chapter 9. In that day I will raise up the booth of David that has fallen, and repair its breaches, and raise up its ruins, and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and all the nations who are called by my name, declares the Lord who does this. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him who sows the seed. The mountains shall drip sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land, and they shall never again be uprooted out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual for today is from Psalm 107. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. The epistle is from Romans chapter 12. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, in proportion to our faith. If service, in our serving. The one who teaches, in his teaching. The one who exhorts, in his exhortation. The one who contributes, in generosity. The one who leads, with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our verse for our gospel is from Psalm 148. Alleluia, praise him all his angels, praise him all his hosts, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were sticks 
stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water now become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with our hymn of the day, number 402, The Only Son from Heaven. Number 402.
Grace and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon title for today is See a Need, Fill a Need, and it's based on this wonderful first miracle we get from our gospel. Dear brothers and sisters, when there arose a need, Jesus filled it, even a need such as wine for a wedding party. Now, this is truly an amazing account of the life of our Lord, loaded with lessons for us and for our lives, now here on earth and with each other and for eternity in heaven with our Lord. And all of these lessons serve one primary purpose, that you will believe and be saved by this Christ, his miraculous power and his compassionate desire to supply your every need of body and soul. I'm going to read to you a Uh, the very end of the book of John. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. But why, amidst all the sickness, suffering, and persecution going on all around him, when both political and religious leaders were domineering, exploiting, enslaving, and even murdering people all around him, why did Jesus choose such a miracle as this for his first? How could he turn a blind eye to all of that to help a crowd that had probably already drunk too much wine? For one thing, there's a lesson to be learned about vocation, our calling in life in relation to our neighbor and how we are to serve him. By this account and the order in which John presents it, Jesus had been invited to this wedding as Mary's son. And while at the wedding, the wedding party, the guests, and even the servants made up Jesus' neighborhood at the time. These were the people who lived around him. There were reputations and perhaps even livelihoods at stake here. A failed wedding feast could mean disaster for business and ostracizing in the community for the host, the bride and groom, and certainly the master of the feast, and unemployment without the benefit of a government unemployment check for the servants. So Jesus was indeed having compassion on them when their need arose. And at the same time, he teaches us that homeless people in the streets of Stratford, starving children in India or Central America, hurricane victims in Haiti, or even pagan tribes in the third world countries in need of hearing the gospel are no excuse for us to ignore the needs of those closest to us, let alone a text from a distant best friend or Facebook message from someone we've never even met. The people with whom we live and work and play and go to school every day, those people within arm's reach and the sound of our voice, the ones whom we see struggling side by side with us and who see us warts and all, those are the people that we are primarily here to serve. We are not any holier or more useful to God and the world for expanding our horizons and trying to make a difference if we are ignoring what's going on around us with the flesh and blood people whose lives and behavior is most affected by us. And as uh, Dr. Luther likes to remind us, the milkmaid milking the cows, the the mother nursing her child, the, the father changing a soiled diaper is doing just as pious a work as the pastor preaching the word, as long as these things are done through and with faith in Christ. All of this is in fact God working to provide daily bread according to his economy of created order to provide for the needs of his people and our neighbors as needs arise. Furthermore, let us not forget that life, eternal life, begins here in this world. 
Neither let us forget that Jesus himself is true God and true man, touching and having to do with two worlds, heaven and earth. So as we have seen by this account of the miracle at Cana, we learn not to despise the good gifts of God's earthly kingdom according to their intended purpose. Sex, marriage, family, food, drink, recreation. God provides these things according to our needs. We should neither count them for too little or too much. They are not evil for being earthly. It's our sin that curses them and tends to use them for evil. That so many marriages go, are going bad and end painfully is not the fault of God's gift. And so it shouldn't be held in contempt, rejected or replaced. That so many pregnancies are unwanted or inconvenient is not the fault of the child who has been conceived or the God who has caused the life to begin. It is the sinful will and selfishness of men that deem them as such to justify disposing of them as some sort of excess baggage. That so much harm is caused under the influence of certain beverages does not mean that that beverage is evil. Else why would Jesus have provided more after plenty had already been consumed? These and indeed all of God's created things are to be cherished and enjoyed for the gifts that they are and the benefits that they bring. But none of them should be given inordinate attention or revered as more than they are, particularly if they take precedence over remembering to keep the Sabbath day holy and become excuses to despise preaching in God's word, which simply means to rather be doing something else than receiving God's gift of forgiveness of sins, life, and eternal salvation, where and when it's being offered as part of your necessary regular regimen of life. But what does this have to do with our relationship with God and our life in the kingdom of heaven? Certainly, Jesus didn't come to be our party friend and drinking buddy. And as a wonderful gift as marriage is for the security and pleasures of companionship and the bearing and rearing of the next generation, as well as all the societal benefits and structure that marriage provides, even for those who never themselves become husband or wife. Marriage is not the ultimate end and purpose for which we were created. Jesus answered them and said to them, the sons of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are counted worthy to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, nor can they die anymore. For they are equal to the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. Man and wife are created in God's image. And so marriage reflects the relationship that he has with us. Forgiveness, forbearance, faithfulness, and models it to the world around us. You see, God always has and always does use earthly or earthy things to convey his heavenly kingdom and spiritual things to us. Primarily people, and especially the closest people to us, our family, to pass the faith once delivered to them along to us. That's why he created them in the first place. More than likely, it was our parents who brought us to the baptismal font and Christ's church to be brought into the kingdom of heaven, taught the faith, and united in the flesh with Christ. All these delivered by Christ's flesh and blood servants and stewards of the feast. This is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And from Ephesians, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. This faith is also a gift of God to us as the need arises. We see it in action here as well from a rather startling source in our gospel. Jesus' mother, the Virgin Mary. His mother said to the servants, whatever he tells you, do it. That is not just confidence, that is faith. Trusting that what God tells us to do in his word is good, beneficial, authoritative, and dynamic. No matter how insignificant and uncomfortable it may look and feel to us or how inconvenient and costly it might be for us to plan our lives around it. It may not make sense, words, water, wine. 
But in these things is not only life, but life eternal. Because God fills them up just as certainly as he did the water pots. He filled them up using people he called according to his word and command. It is his word and work that makes these things and people holy for his use and provides for us abundantly whenever the need arises, which, if we're honest about it, is always, isn't it? Yes, when there arose a need, Jesus fulfilled it, even such a need as wine for a wedding party. And as our needs arise day by day, he continues to fulfill them, giving us life abundantly, for here and now in gifts such as marriage and wine and forever in heaven as he forgives you all your sins. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with the offertory. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you manifested your glory in the sign at Cana. As you restored creation through the shedding of Christ's blood, pour out your grace in abundance. Give us joy and gladness in the revelation of your truth in the person of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, preserve your son's bride, the church. Make it her constant joy and delight to preach the good news of forgiveness in her Savior to poor sinners like us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, we bring before you the sick, distressed, and needy. Especially we ask your blessings upon Albert and Beatrice, Lundy, David, Judy, Norma, Renata, Ron, Lawrence and Ruth, Elizabeth, Lois, and Susanna. Give your abiding comfort in every circumstance that in Christ we shall not die, but live and declare his works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, grant us all to walk before you in purity and holiness, putting our trust in you and leading such lives on earth that in the world to come, we may have everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, true peace can be found only in you. When we fail to live at peace with one another, always be close at hand to bring us reconciliation and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. going to have our one final hymn before we depart for today. It's going to be hymn number 507, Holy, 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 number 507. Thank you so much for coming and spending time with us here as we thank God for the wonders of his son who was sent to save us, to fulfill every need that we have. And I hope that knowing that God has sent his son to fulfill all of your spiritual and bodily needs will give you strength to persevere in these times. God bless you. Amen.